Have you heard about Axie Infinity and Play to Earn Gaming? This fast growing part of the gaming market emerged during the pandemic as a worldwide phenomenon. Axie Infinity is the first NFT platform to exceed 1 billion in transactions. Merchants in the Philippines now accept the game's in-game currency for food and sneakers. And a business that rents out in-game NFTs has raised $22 million in venture funding, including $6 million from Andreessen Horowitz. What's going on here? Is Axie Infinity a gaming fad, a crypto Ponzi scheme, or is it a new digital nation? Let's find out. I'm going to share seven must-know facts about the breakthrough hit Axie Infinity. If you're wondering what Play to Earn Gaming is all about, and you want to hear about a project that actually delivers on the idealistic promise of crypto, this video is for you. Now, maybe you feel like many of my friends in the gaming industry who've been asking me, well, why should I care about this? Why should I pay attention to Axie Infinity? It's simple. This game turns the free-to-play economic model on its head. Most free-to-play games have big marketing budgets and talented teams pumping out in-game assets. In contrast, Axie's creator Sky Mavis spends no money on marketing and gives 95% of the game's revenues back to the players. In this Pokemon meets CryptoKitties game, the players own and create Axies, which are blockchain-based revenue-producing assets through battling, breeding, and trading. Sky Mavis, the game developers, make money by taking a cut every time an Axie changes hands and by collecting a fee when players breed new Axies. At this point, all the players have created more than 2 million Axies, but this didn't all come out of nowhere. Axie has been years in the making. Meet Gabby Dizon, co-founder of Yield Guild Games, a company and DAO built on top of the Axie ecosystem. Here's Gabby's take on how Axie evolved into the phenomenon that it is today. I've been a game developer for 18 years now. 2017, we discovered Ethereum and smart contracts, and we were experimenting with smart contracts to see how it could possibly disrupt the game industry. While we were doing that, um, CryptoKitties came out in late 2017, brought down the Ethereum network, and popularize the non-fungible token. And I said, yeah, this is it. The NFTs are what's going to change the game industry. On to our seven must-know facts about Axie. And fact seven is truly astonishing. So make sure to stick around to the end so you can hear it. Fact one, this breakthrough NFT game came from Southeast Asia. Axie was created by Vietnamese game developers and it first blew up in the Philippines and Southeast Asia. The original co-founders are Vietnamese. Uh, the COO, Alex, is Norwegian. And then the head of growth, Jeff, is American. They're the ones that are public facing. They let the Westerners kind of talk to, to the public while they kind of run, run the show internally, basically. What happened was that when people cashed out, they would take a photo of like the wad of cash that they cashed out and then the, the stuff that they were able to buy, like the food they were able to buy with it. They take a photo of it and then upload it to Facebook and they're like, this is what I bought like playing this game. That's what drove the growth of Axie was these people posting that they were earning money, taking a photo of what they bought and then uploading in Facebook and having other people see that and come in. Fact two, Axie's sudden popularity spike was driven by pandemic job loss. Philippines turned out to be host to a perfect storm of unemployed tech-savvy people who really needed the income that Axie could provide. People who got laid off here in the rural Philippines, like they had no job, they were stuck at home. They were looking for ways to make money and they found Axie Infinity. And then they realized that the money they could earn was actually higher than the jobs that they were laid off from. For context, here in the Philippines, a minimum wage job in the province is probably something like $200 a month. And with Axie, they were, they were like basically getting somewhere between three to $500 a month. Fact three, 95% of Axie's revenues goes back to the players. Axie's economy turns the traditional free-to-play model on its head. I also joined the Axie community as a player um, in late 2018. And what was remarkable about Axie even then was that they really gave away most of the economy to its players. Where Axie really only makes money is by its marketplace, where, where it takes a 4.25% fee 
which means 96% of the value goes to the players. To control uh, inflation, they introduced the SLP token, which is a game resource that could be mined basically by winning matches inside the game. Then you had to use it as a resource. You had to spend it to breed two axes to create a new one. So now if I wanted to breed axes, I needed to be either playing the game and winning matches so that I can get um, enough SLP. But I could also sync the balance to the blockchain, which means that SLP becomes a cryptocurrency, a token in my wallet. And once it's a token in my wallet, then I can then transfer that to someone, sell it back to Ether, or eventually sell it back to um, whatever currency um, is being used by the person, right? Fact four, many new Axie players are being onboarded into crypto for the first time. Turns out that Axie is providing community-supported crypto education to thousands of rural, unbanked Filipinos. I bought three Axies for that time for about four to five dollars of three axes. And then I played it, I'm earning some tokens in game, and then I tried to sync and swap it in other cryptocurrency like Ethereum. And then the Ethereum I get, I convert it in coins.ph for peso. And that's my first cash out. At that time, it was like 1,000 pesos for 15 days of playing that game. Fact five, Axie enables an emergent profit sharing model called scholarships. Some players don't have enough money to buy their own Axies. Scholarships provide a way for those players to not need to buy, but be able to earn money and cash it out simply by playing other people's Axies. It came to a point that we saw the potential to help others, yeah. you know, to help our co-Filipinos that you know, even uh, they love they love game playing games, but they don't have money as well, and they need money as well to earn, especially during the, this pandemic times. My bosses in Axie University, they're not like the other bosses that very strict. They just talking me like a friend, but in a professional way. Um, they help me build my confidence. They teach me everything in leadership. I'm really grateful I have them as my managers. Yield Guild Games, co-founded by Gabby Dizon, is one of the companies that enables scholarships for players. We have a full-time team of basically developers, finance, like any any like startup team that creates the products basically and the technology so that we can run the guild. But we don't really manage the players ourselves. Just in the last week, we paid out eight over eight hundred thousand dollars to our scholars and managers. And imagine the kind of impact with a business model that pays out life-changing sums of money to our player community every week. Like that's just what the business model does. And strangely enough, the scholars program was made possible by a system glitch. Scholarship system was an emergent phenomenon that happened. So the Axie team actually didn't plan for it. There is an interesting quirk in their architecture in that there are two ways to log into your account. One is a username password login, and the other one is to sign in with your crypto wallet. Obviously, if you sign in with your crypto wallet, then you have access to your assets, and then you can buy them, sell them, get them to someone else. Like you can do whatever you want with your Axies. If I logged in with my username password, I can access the game but I can't touch the assets. So some people in the community figured out that I, I can do that to kind of fashion a makeshift rental system. I would give you my login. You'd be able to access and play the game and accrue SLP, but you wouldn't be able to run away with my axes. And then at the end of like a 15 day period or a month, I would just do a revenue share on the SLP earned. So that was how scholarship started. So when that happened, I realized that kind of my, like I had a dream of creating a blockchain gaming guild, basically that would, um, that would be like a World of Warcraft guild, but you would own the NFT assets and the guild members would own it. I realized that it was now possible to do so. Fact six, it's not a pyramid scheme, but it's shaped like one. Unlike a pyramid scheme, Axie delivers real value to its players. 
it's basically like all of the marketing that Silicon Valley does, except that like the value is externalized to the players. The MLM basically promises a cut, right, of, of what the people uh, that you've referred were earning. So they don't do that, which I think is critical for the integrity of the system. So it is a growth loop. It is pyramid in structure because it requires new players coming in. But honestly, any startup is absolutely dependent on new users coming in. Fact seven. Axie's 30-day retention is 90%, which is crazy high. Axie players get hooked both by the strategic depth and fun of the game and by the opportunity to make money. The game itself, it's fun. Um, there is a like, there is a depth to the meta game, deep enough that there are tournaments around it. And without that fun, it's actually impossible for a game to be as successful as it is. There are games right now who are kind of trying to be blind copies of of Axie. It's it's like pretty much a Ponzi, and then after a month, everything comes crashing down because it's not fun. One of the most interesting things about Axie that I'm sure you'll appreciate is that it has a 30-day retention of 90%, and nobody else in the industry has that. Free-to-play designers know virtual economies, but they have to turn it into a model where you're actually giving value to the player instead of extracting value. And so, yeah, that's what's needed to become successful in, in play-to-earn. So in summary, Axie Infinity is a play-to-earn game that's generating meaningful income and business opportunities for thousands of players in emerging economies. As Gabby says, the play to earn model isn't magic pixie dust. You still have to build an appealing, differentiated game and get enough momentum going to spin the economy to life and then keep it going. We're witnessing a seismic shift from extractive to productive player economies. For game designers coming from an MMO or free to play background, this is an amazing area to explore. What will we all do with this golden opportunity? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Special thanks to Gabby Dizon and Yield Guild Games for their help making this movie and for giving us permission to use excerpts from their documentary, Play to Earn, NFT Gaming in the Philippines. You'll find the links to all these in the description below. If you want to see the full length interview and stay up to date on trend setting products like Axie Infinity, Join us in the Game Thinking Hub, our free learning community. Go to gamethinking.io slash hub and sign up now. I'll see you there.